Now, the United States of America has given out grants worth 2.5 million U.S. dollars to the Kenyan businesses in a bid to bluster bilateral relations between the two countries. U.S. Ambassador to Kenya Meg Whitman exuded confidence in expanding trade numbers between the two countries. Ambassador Whitman further affirmed that she was keen on working closely with Kenyan businesses to unleash the potential of the ICT sector as Kenya stands tall as a key hub for fintech. The ambassador had an exclusive interview with KTN's deputy economy editor, Abi Agina, on a raft of issues, and here now is part of that interview. Um, what are some of the key areas that uh, you'll be driving the agenda between Kenya and the United States? Well, you recall I arrived on August 1st, and the Kenyan elections were August 9th, so yeah. I um, you know, had to get up to speed very fast on Kenyan politics and the election process, and of course what the United States Embassy had done for a number of months to be a supporter on free, fair, and transparent elections. Yeah. And I think it, it went remarkably well. I think this, many people have said this was the freest, fairest, um, most democratic election in Kenyan history. So I think it went incredibly well, with help from a lot of um, international partners, but frankly, the Kenyan people All right. did an amazing job. So that was my first focus. My second focus, and still is, visas. Um, when I got here, the first appointment that you could get as a Kenyan to come to the United States, the first interview appointment was June of 2024. Sure. And I said, this is not acceptable. We have to do better. So we've added staff. We've done business process re-engineering. How can we do things more efficiently and effectively? And we've also reduced the requirement. If you are a Kenyan who's had a visa in the last four years, you don't need to have another interview. Mm -hmm. So that has freed up a tremendous number of interview slots. And if you go on our website today, you can get an appointment between now and December. Interesting. Quite a big relief for Kenyans. Yes. And really, how does this impact on the business community? Well, it's very important because there are students who want to go to the United States. There's business people that want to go to the United States. I was at Exotic Nuts this morning, which is a woman-owned business. There's yeah. three partners. I met with two of them. And one of them had been to the United States to go to a trade show, but the other one couldn't get a visa. And I, so I told her this morning, go on, when we're done, go on the website and you'll be able to get an appointment before December. And that's important for them because they want to go and meet more future customers to grow their business here in Kenya, which by the way is a remarkable success story. All right, quite uh, some interesting moves you've made there, Ambassador. Let's get more into the aspects around uh, business yep. and trade. Um, we did see you ironing yes. uh, some few minutes ago and how did it feel and uh, what's the vibe that you're getting from yeah. the export processing zone uh, companies that are here? Well you can imagine economic trade and development between our two countries is a very important um, priority for me because I have a business background. I'm not a career diplomat, I'm actually a businesswoman. Sure. And so I'm quite excited to um, see what more growth and development can be done between Kenya and the United States and I think the opportunities are endless. So I said I wanted to go out today and see what was happening on the ground and see places like Mass um, that are employing, they just started here in 2020 sure. um, and you know, employ thousands of people now. And it was fun to go out and meet the young people. You can see out the window, it is a very young workforce. In fact, they told me there's just a few people on the floor who are, un who are over 30 years old. Uh -huh. So they've trained all these people. And so it was fun to learn from a young Kenyan how to iron a, a Tommy Hilfiger sweatshirt. So Amazing. it was great. And it just gives you a sense of, you know, being part of something and understanding the, uh, the excitement uh, on the ground. You probably saw that I, uh, when we were doing visas, I, I was doing fingerprinting. Yeah, I saw that. And uh, so I just like to sort of see what it's like. Um, earlier today, I was um, putting uh, tickets, badges, l labels on uh, some clothes at UAL. So it's just fun and you just get a, a good sense of, of the, the vibrancy of, of these firms, which is amazing. Speaking about economic cooperation and uh, of course growing the trade numbers, um, we do know that uh, the AGOA agreement is due to lapse in 2025, which is not too far from now. Yeah. And what opportunities are you seeing for negotiations, especially yeah. with Kenya? Well, I think everyone agrees that AGOA has been an amazing success story. Um, just this past month, it was announced that the U.S. is Kenya's largest export market. 
um, you know, we were number two to some of the East African countries, but now we're number one. Yeah. And I think in large part explained by AGOA. Apparel exports to the United States have increased dramatically since AGOA was put into place. So everyone thinks it's a big success story.